In this video, you're going to learn how to find the direction angle of a vector, and we're going to go through three examples together. So the first example, we've got this vector 3, negative 5, which means we're going to go right 3 in the x direction, down 5 in the y direction. So our vector is going to look something like that. Now, when you find the direction angle of a vector, you want to find the angle that the vector makes with the positive x-axis measured counterclockwise. So it's going to be a positive angle measured from that positive x-axis counterclockwise. Now, when you look at your vector, let's say, for example, this is your vector right here. If you were to drop a perpendicular to the x-axis, you can see that a right triangle is formed. And we know that this angle here, the tangent of this angle, is the opposite side over the adjacent. So we have tangent theta is equal to y over x, or opposite over adjacent. But to solve for the angle, we have to do the tangent inverse. So whenever we're solving for the angle, uh, direction angle of a vector, we can do the tangent inverse of the y component divided by the x component. The only catch is, is that sometimes that gives us the incorrect answer. And that's why it's helpful to sketch the vector and then make adjustments as necessary, which I'll show you in these three examples. So here, when we look at the angle theta, I'm going to say the tangent inverse of y over x, which going to our calculator now, make sure your calculator is in degrees. Go to the mode and change it to degrees if it's in radians. So tangent inverse of negative 5 divided by 3 is giving me an angle of, I'm just going to round a little bit, negative 59 degrees. Now negative 59 degrees, that's right here. Clockwise, clockwise is a negative angle. We want the angle that's counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. That's our direction angle. So you can see here what I'm going to have to do is add 360 degrees, giving us an angle of 301 degrees. Okay, so remember, with a positive x-axis measured counterclockwise. Let's look at example number two. Now this one, our vector is in the uh, linear combination form of the standard unit normal vectors i and j. i is a one unit vector in the x direction and j is a one unit vector in the y direction. But I like to just rewrite this in the component form, negative 2, comma 5. It's the exact same thing, just a different way of writing it. But going now to our formula, we've got theta equals the tangent inverse of y divided by x. Now let's draw the vector. So uh, negative 2, 5 means we're going left 2, up 5. Okay, so it, our vector will look something like that. When I go to the calculator and calculate the tangent inverse, I'm getting an angle that's uh, negative 68.2 degrees. Now, negative 68.2 is actually right here. See, clockwise, negative 68.2. I, I don't want that angle. I want this angle right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add 180 degrees, which gives me 111.8 degrees. Now, you might be saying, Mario, why is the calculator giving us the wrong answer? Ah, well, remember from earlier in math and trigonometry and in geometry, remember when you do the tangent inverse, it's always restricted from negative 90 or negative pi over 2 to positive 90 or positive pi over 2. This way, it yields just one answer, so it's a function. So when you do the tangent inverse, it's going to give you one answer restricted in this domain here, and that's why it's giving us this negative 68.2, which is important that we draw the vector or visualize it and realize that, ah, how do I get from the positive x-axis to this vector? Well, I'm going to have to go 111.8 degrees. Now, another way to do this problem, maybe if you're having trouble visualizing this, drop a perpendicular, this is 2 and 5, you could do the tangent inverse of 5 over 2. I'm just going to treat this as a positive 2, just like a, just a triangle. Okay, That's going to give me 68.2, but you can see when I see a straight line like this, like this x-axis, this is 180, and then I'm backing up or going back 68.2 or like subtracting off 68.2, which gives us this angle here, 111.8. So a couple different ways to think about it, but the main thing is you want to sketch it and make sure you're getting that correct angle. Let's look at one more example. See if you can do this one on your own. Okay, see if you can find the direction angle for number three, this vector negative 5, negative 12. So negative 5, negative 12 means you're going left 5, down 12. You'd be somewhere over here. That's your vector. We can use our formula. Theta equals the tangent inverse of the y component 
over the x component. Let's go to our calculators. Uh, tangent inverse. And I'm getting the angle 67.38. 67.38 is right here. But you can see our vector is actually here in the third quadrant. So how do we get the actual angle that the vector makes with the positive x-axis measured counterclockwise? Well, you can see we're going to have to add an additional 180 to the 67.38. So that comes out to 247.38 degrees. And you got it. Another way to think about this too is like if you make this into a triangle, 67.38, this into a triangle, uh, these two triangles are congruent to each other, okay, and this is 67.38, you're going 180 to get here, and then an additional 67.38, so another way to look at it, and you got it. Now, if you want to go deeper with vectors, I put together an introduction to vectors video, and I'll put a link to it right there. Follow me over to that video. We go into things like the magnitude and sketching vectors and adding and subtracting vectors, unit vectors, finding the angle between vectors, kind of an introduction to, to vectors. If you want to understand vectors more deeply, follow me there and we'll get some practice. I'll see you there.